thank you to all virtual viewers and welcome to New Salem's Sunday service. New Salem's church vision for 2024 is the path in the seeking, the praise in the seeking, the purity in the seeking, the priority in the seeking. We are elated to have Christian Academy back and running. Our teachers are thrilled and so are our students. We appreciate you all for your dedication to the ministry by bringing your children. We would like to keep our members that are in the hospital and at home in our prayers. The first Sunday in April, April 7th, will be our 96th church anniversary celebration. The Memphis Baptist Ministerial Association 2024 Citywide Revival will be held here at New Salem, March 31st to April 5th, nightly at 7 p.m. Sunday, March 31st, Pastor Frank Ray. Monday, April 1st, Dr. Bartholomew Orr. Tuesday, April 2nd, Bishop Kevin Willis. Wednesday, April 3rd, Dr. Terrence Taylor. Thursday, April 4th, Dr. Terry Mackey. Friday, April 5th, Pastor John Terrace Tate. The 2024 Frank Ray Conference will be June 30th to July 3rd. Sunday, June 30th, Night in White with Dr. Gina Stewart. Monday, July 1st, Dr. Philip Pointer. Tuesday, July 2nd, Pastor John Terrace Tate. And Wednesday, July 3rd, Preacher's Rally with Reverend Michael Boone, Dr. Terrence Taylor, and Dr. Donald Parsons. Are you connected to New Salem Connect? Members, text JOIN to 901-501-6675. You'll receive information pertaining to New Salem Baptist Church. Join Pastor Ray on Tuesday night for Bible study at 7 p.m. Come out and join us every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. for Youth and Young Adult Bible Study in room 134. CDs, DVDs, and other items are available in the bookstore and on sale. Please join us on Monday night at 7.15 p.m. for your prayer call. The number is 701-802-5414 and the access code is 476-261. Lastly, there are now two worship opportunities for your worship experience. The 7 a.m. traditional service and our 9.30 a.m. service with full band. Come join us. We'd love to have you here at New Salem. This is Alexis McKay, and this has been your New Salem News. New Salem. Good morning, New Salem. So glad to see so many of you out this morning. We want to welcome our virtual audience in. Let's stand to our feet as our normal amount of custom as we prepare to read our mission statement this morning. Y'all all right? Amen. Good, good, good. Y'all ready? Let's do it. The New Salem Missionary Baptist Church 
will provide an opportunity to clearly understand the gospel, grow in relationship with Christ, and experience a sense of belonging in the nurturing and Christian community. We therefore submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in faith, recognize the mission of the body of Christ, is essentially one of evangelism, discipleship, that in turn gives birth to the ministries of Christian education, missions, and evangelism. Yeah, lifestyle of love, sacrifice, and service, as reflected in Jesus Christ, does yield to him our stewardship of time, talent, tissue, and ties, that the kingdom of God will be blessed. Our scripture for the year is come from Matthew 6 and 33, and it reads, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Our church vision this year is the path in the seeking, the praise in the seeking, the purity in the seeking, and the priority in the seeking. It's just simply saying we need to seek him. Let, let us bow gracious as God our Father. We love you so much. God, we thank you so much for just being who you are. God, you said yes again and allowed us safe passage to get here and to convene and gather together, God, to give you praises. Now, God, I pray for every family that's represented. I pray, oh God, that you would just touch us and meet us all at the point of our needs. God, I pray right now that you would let no lack, no shortage, no insufficiency come upon any of us, God, but that you let us have life and have it more abundantly. God, I pray right now for this worship experience, oh God. I'm praying now, God, that you would just allow your Shekinah glory to fall on this place. I pray, God, that you would just bless our pastor and give him a rhyme word for all that we need, oh God. God, I pray a special prayer for our pastor, oh God, that you would prop him up on all leaning sides. God, that you would give him a word from on high. Give him a crystal clarity, God, as he stand boldly and declare your word. God, I pray right now that you would anoint him afresh from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. And God, I pray that same anointing will rest upon our brothers as they prepare their hearts to sing melodiously to you, God. That they will come together on one accord. That the power will be so strong, God, that we won't be able to stand. God, I pray for every department, every ministry that makes up our church. And God, we don't want to be exclusive. We want to pray these same prayers for those other churches that are open in your name. Pray, God, that your word will go forth, God, and not come back void. But that it will do all that it set out to do. God, we thank you in advance for what you're getting ready to do. I pray, oh God, that you would bless like never before. God, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Put your hands together. If you're glad to be here, put your hands together for the Lord. Ain't he good? We're going to do an old song, a little congregational song. If y'all don't mind, help us. Well, come and go to that land. Come and go. Go to that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. Y'all come on help me. Yeah, come on, say it. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land where I'm bound. Where I'm bound. Well, come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go 
to the land where I'm at. Here's another thing, listen. I've got a little one in that land. I've got a little one is in that land. I've got a little one is in that land where I'm found. If anybody got a little one, let me see your hand. I've got a little one in that land. I've got a little one in that land. I know I got a little one in that land where I'm bound. You know who else is in me? Well, I got a savior. He's in that land. I've got a savior. He's in that land. I'll have a savior in that land where I'm bound. Where I'm Is in that land, I have a savior. Is in that land, I have a savior. In that land, where I'm bound. Let me ask you again. Yeah, don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land? Is anybody wanna go, y'all? In that land, where I'm. You wanna go to that land where I'm bound? Yeah, listen here. Well, I have a savior. He's in that land. I've got a savior. Can I get one witness? I've got a savior. He's in that land where I'm bound. Where I'm bound? I've got a savior. In that land, I don't know about you, but in that land where I'm bound, you know where it is. It's in that land, it's in that land, in that land, in that land, it's in that land, y'all, in that land. Y'all listen. Well, Jesus is on the main line. You all are telling me. Come on, put those hands together. I know that Jesus is on the main line. Tell him that sound good. Well, Jesus is on the main line. You all are telling me what you want. You just come up and tell him. What Say it again, Lord. I know that Jesus is on the main line. You ought to tell him what you want. Is anybody out there anything to tell him? He's on the main line. You ought to tell him what you want. I know that Jesus is on the main line. You ought to tell God what you want. You just call him up. Tell them what you want. Listen here, I don't know what it is, but listen. If you are sick and you can't get well, tell them what you want. Oh, I said, if you are sick and you can't get well, you ought to tell them what you want. Oh, Lord, if you are sick and you can't get well, just tell them what you want about. to do this morning. Listen. Well, you ought to call him up. Call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up. You ought to call him up and just tell him. Can't you tell him? Can't you tell him? Just call him up. Call the Lord and just tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you and that's go home. Well, all you gotta do is call him up and tell him. You just call him up and tell him. If anybody ever call him up and tell him. Do you know you can call him up and tell him? If anybody ever call him up 
sons in the house and our deacons, our brothers and our sisters. It's good to be here. And to be reminded that you can merely call him up. Tell him what you want. Most of us are cosmic of the fact that when we tell him, he shows up. And when he show up, he shows out. Would you bless God for these men? <coughs> to see so many men here this early in the morning, that's just a joy, isn't it? Amen. Thank God for the men. Eh? Yeah, and always glad to see you beautiful ladies. But most time it's a challenge to get men 
but we have men here. And so I am, I am grateful. John chapter 17. Verse 1. These words speak Jesus. Lifted up his eyes toward heaven, said, Father, thou hast come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Thank you so much. I want to hang here all day today in these few verses. And of course, even after spending all day with it, I will merely just scratch the surface of this particular text this 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 lesson is actually the lord's prayer what you thought was the lord's prayer was not the lord's prayer all your life you have heard that Matthew 6, verse 9 through 11, you heard that's the Lord's prayer, our Father which art in heaven, and hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debtors, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. All of our lives we have been taught that's the Lord's Prayer. Matter of fact, I was taught it my very first day in school. That all of us stood and we recited that, that prayer. And even now, many of you all are looking at me and say, where is he going with this? But there are some things in that prayer that the Lord could not use for himself. He could not use and forgive me because Jesus never committed a sin. He could not use and lead me not into temptation because he was always in control of temptation. Of course, I've said before that that prayer is a wonderful prayer it start off with God parental by saying our Father. Then with God's priority by saying hallowed be thy name. Then deal with God's program by saying thy kingdom come. And then deal with God's plan by saying thy will be done. And then deal with God's provision by saying give us this day our daily bread. It then deal with pardon by saying, and forgive us. And then it deal with protection, lead us not into temptation. And then it deal with God's permanence by saying, for thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. It then deal with God's postscript by saying, if you forgive those that forgive you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. It's a wonderful prayer. But it is not the Lord's Prayer. That particular prayer is like writing a letter to the Lord. It is addressed to our Father. The actual address is which are in heaven. The request is that the kingdom will come, that the will will be done, that we will receive daily bread. The seal is for thine is the kingdom. The day that it was set was this day. And the stamp is amen. But it's still not the Lord's prayer. <laughs> In that particular prayer, God says, if you do three things for me, I'll do three things for you. He said, if you spotlight my name, if you spread my kingdom, if you surrender to my will, 
He said, I will give you pardon for your past, provision for your presence, and prosperity for your pilgrimage. It's a wonderful prayer. But it is not the Lord's prayer. It is what you call the model prayer. The patterns prayer. The disciples prayer. My mother, she was a seamstress. She didn't sew for nobody else, but she sewed for all of my sisters. She was not able to go to Hancock's and place like that to get, get uh, patterns to sew. She would look at my sisters and cut out newspaper. <laughs> and she would make dresses from watching what she cut out in the newspaper. The newspaper was just a pattern uh, as to the real stuff. This, what we call the Lord's Prayer, is a patterns prayer. He sets the tone as to how we should pray. John chapter 17 is the actual Lord's Prayer. It is the longest prayer that Jesus prayed in Scripture. John chapter 17 is the longest prayer. And yet the longest prayer, you can read it in three minutes. Isn't that amazing? We thought that prayers are effective based upon how long you pray. But it's not how long your prayer is. It's how strong your prayer is. He taught the mall prayer that I just been reading, and there's 66 words in that. And we've been using it ever since. When Hezekiah wanted an extension on life, he used 30 words, and God gave him 15 more years. When Peter wanted to walk the water, he used 13 words. And when he started to sink in, he took 10 of those back. And just say, Lord, save me. <laughs> Am I here by myself? It's not how long your prayer is, but how strong your prayer is. But John has a unique way of walking us into situations with the master. You remember in John chapter 2, when the Bible said Jesus turned water into wine, Mary came to Jesus and says, uh, listen, we're out of wine. Uh, and Jesus says, what have I got to do with it? In John 2, verse 4, he said, because my hour has not yet come. And then in John chapter 7, verse 6, he says it again, my hour. It's not yet come. And then it says again in John 7, 30, my hour has not yet come. He says it again in John chapter 8, verse 20, my hour has not yet come. But in John chapter 12, verse 23, he said, my hour has come. John 13, 1, he said, my hour has come. And then in the text I read this morning, John 17, he said, my hour has come. What was he talking about? When he, he said to Mary, my hour, he said, listen, you're trying to get me to deal with Calvary too soon. But when he get to John chapter 12, he said, my hour has come. He had reference to Calvary. You see, everything from Genesis to Calvary pointed to Calvary. And everything beyond Calvary point back to Calvary. That's why it's always good for Christians to at least visit Calvary. Because it was at Calvary where our sin debt was paid. It was at Calvary where the bitter waters of life were made sweet. It was at Calvary where our eternal check was signed. <laughs> Talk to me somebody. He gets here and watch how he approaches. And John is such a new, unique writer 
until just his commentary alone, he deal with the subtext leading up to the text to help you understand the text. In other words, he looked back before he go forward. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word. He looks back. First John 1 and 1, that which was from the beginning, he looked back. Revelation 1, 19, write the things which thou hast seen. He looked back. He deal with the subtext leading up to the text to help you understand the text. Teach Reverend Ray. And so in John 17, these words spake Jesus. In other words, Jesus now moved from his teaching to his examples. Because in John 14, 15, 16, Jesus is teaching. Because in John 14, he teaches about how to handle troubled hearts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you see, as quiet as it is kept, sooner or later, all of us will have problems with troubled hearts. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Talk to me, somebody. He said, because if you believe in God, believe also in me. And John 14, 9, he tell why. He said, I he said, when you see me, you see the Father. Because I and my Father are one. He said, if you're going to write my daddy a letter, send it to my address. Because we stay under the same roof. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. So we are one. He, he deal with troubled hearts. He said, I am going away. To prepare a place for you. If he is preparing a place for us, he must prepare us for the place. <sighs> when we first built those apartments across the street, and we brought in some people that weren't used to apartments. Wasn't very long for we saw two or three commodes sitting on the front porch. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If you put a unprepared people in a prepared place, it's just a matter of time before the place start looking like the people. So if he is preparing a place for us, he must prepare us for the place. How do he prepare us for the place? Revelation 3.20 said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. As a matter of fact, I, I can break in. But, but I'm too intelligent to break in. You got to open the door. He said, The latch is on the inside. Talk to me, somebody. So you got to open the door to let me in. He prepare us for the place. How do we do it? He prepare us by sending storms. Uh, storms has a way uh, of straightening us up. Uh, some years ago. I just left New Orleans and I left that Saturday. Katrina hit that Monday and devastated the whole city. A terrible woman. The next year in Houston, Texas, Rita, another terrible woman hit Houston. And I talked to my friend, Dr. Patterson, A. Lewis Patterson, because they left when they heard that it was on the way. And he said he spent 
16 hours on the highway trying to get from Houston to Dallas. I said to him, why did you run? He said, well, he said, I'll tell you like this. It's a guy in Los Angeles, California was fighting Joe Lewis. And Joe Lewis beat this fella up so bad that the guy got on train coming down south headed to New Orleans and when they was coming through St. Louis so they caught him running through the woods and they caught him and asked him why was he running and so he said well coming through Missouri he heard him on the intercom said next stop St. Louis he said all I heard was Louis When that Rita Stone hit New Orleans, y'all ain't saying that. Rita folks said we ain't hanging around. Storms will make you take a second look. Talk to me, somebody. God can do a lot of things with storms. Matter of fact, some of us in church now, because we've encountered storms. But it sends storms to prepare us because we got some stuff in us that need to come out of us. You can't tell me what my God won't do. Talk to me, somebody. Folks, if folk won't come to church, oh, yes, they will. They ain't been in the right storm yet. Let them get in the right storm. You ain't got to beg them to come. They'll pick you up and say, hey, I'm going to your church today. You can ride with me. Storms has a way. Not only storms he sent, he will send suffering. Suffering come in different shapes and forms. Talk to me somebody. Sometimes he sent it through your children. <laughs> Sometimes he sends it through your spouse. Sometimes he sends it through your job. Sometimes he even sends it through your church. He know how to put suffering on you to prepare us for what God got for us. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. He's in John 15. He said, I am the true vine. See, branches must stay connected to the vine. My daddy, we lived in the rural. We raised fruit trees. And every now and then, daddy would take me out with him and he'd get a saw and cut those branches that's hanging. And it looked like he'd take half of the branches off the tree I questioned one day. I said, Adam, why are you cutting all these branches off the trees? He said, see, son, if you notice, when the fruit come, these branches ain't producing nothing. They just, they just hang in there. They, they got leaves, said, but they're really called sap suckers. He said, they ain't producing no fruit, but they're licking up all the sap. And because they're licking up the sap, when the other part of the tree produce fruit, the fruit is bitter. He said, when you cut these leaves off, you may get less fruit, but you get sweeter. You have to remove the sap suckers. Sometime God y'all ain't here <laughs> will move the sap suckers and sometimes church just a jam pack everybody cold nobody saying nothing and then God comes in and prune <laughs> the church and you come back service is better 
Y'all ain't saying that. They're giving more. Oh. <laughs> I wish y'all see how y'all look at that. Because God know how to move. Sap suckers. John 16, he says, I got to go. But you're not strong enough to handle life by yourself. He said, I'm going to send my comforter. Greek word is barakletos. Where you get the root word bakeo. Where you get the root word parakle. Uh, barak is a preposition. It means to come alongside. Second by word, kaleo, mean to be called. The comforter is one that has been called to come along beside you. That means everywhere you go, you're not by yourself. You got somebody coming along beside you. Now you can't see him. But he's there. <laughs> Preach, I'm not in the Greek. I don't know about no paraclete. Or maybe you've heard of paraphrase. Paraphrase is just another way of saying the same thing. If you don't say Yahweh, Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Nisa, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Salon, Jehovah Sikhanu, you can just say Jesus. Another way of saying the same thing. <laughs> Preach, I'm not familiar with paraclete paraphrase, but I have heard of parasol. Parasol is that umbrella. It protects you from stormy weather. But the Holy Spirit will protect you from the storms of life. Haven't heard of paraclete paraphrase. Parasol, but I have heard of paragon. Paragon is another way of talking about somebody that's superior because behind every great man, there's another man to meet his match. If you said George Washington, somebody said Abraham Lincoln. Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Edison. Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle. Larry Bird, Michael Jordan. Muhammad Ali, Lenny Lewis. Talk to me, somebody. But when you say Jesus, the human race will have to hold his peace. Because there's no other name given among men whereby mankind can be said. I've not heard of paraclete, paraphrase, parasol, paragon, but I have heard of a parachute. Now, now parachute will not keep you from falling, but it will let you down easy. But you, 24, said, now under him that's able keep us from falling so he can present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. Yeah. Haven't heard a paraclete, paraphrase, parasol, paragon, parachute, but I have heard of a paramedic. Paramedic is different from a regular medical doctor. Regular medical doctor, when you get sick, you gotta take yourself to the doctor. But a paramedic, when you get sick, will come to where you are. That's who it is with the God I said. <laughs> when you can't get to him, won't he come to you? He may not come when you want him, but he's all ways right on time. What I need to know about paraclete, paraphrase, parasol, paragon, parachute, paramedic is because we're on our way to a city that's called paradise. <laughs> Talk to me somebody. Where the wicked will cease from trouble. Where the weary will be at rest. Where every day will be Sunday. Seventh will have no ear. 
I watch this and I'm out of here. John 14. John 15. John 16. Jesus is looking at folks. You got to be careful when you spend too much time looking at folks. Because we have a tendency a measure in our success by looking at folk. You can always look like a giant if you hang out with midgets. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing in this house. You always hang out with little midgets. You can always look like a giant. Watch how you focus on folks. Because folks will depress you. Folks will get on your last nerve. Folks <laughs> will give you ulcers in the stomach. Talk to me, somebody. Folks will have your blood pressure high. Mm. Watch how you hang out with folks. Talk to me, somebody. He focus on folks. But John chapter seventeen. He focused on the Father. These words spake Jesus. I, I could stay right there the rest of the day because of who it is that's praying. Mm. Jesus. Y'all know him, don't you? He came from nowhere. Stood on a platform of nothing. Reached through nowhere. Caught something while standing on nothing. Jesus. Painted the sky blue. Without using a step ladder. Took an eternal brush. Painted a rainbow in the sky. Jesus. Taught the kangaroo how to hop. Tied a bow tie around the turkey's neck. Whispered into the ear of the wild geese. Tell them when to leave the North Pole. Give them landing rights down south. Jesus. Y'all hear me don't you? He's better than good. He's sweeter than honey. He's mightier than a mountain. He's wider than a round. He's straighter than a cross. He's purer than air. He's clearer than a crystal. Jesus. The word spake Jesus. The thing that impressed me about the text is Jesus is praying. <laughs> Maybe you missed it. Jesus, older than his mother, as old as his father, and he's praying. Jesus controlled time and eternity. On one foot he stands on time. Other foot he stands on eternity. And he's praying. Jesus that cut history in half. Put BC on one side. AD on the other. And he's praying. Talk to me, sir. Jesus, no man takes his life. He lays it down. And yet he's praying. Jesus, who said, my father always hear me. And yet he's praying. Here's the problem. Here I am. Crawl my lazy self up in the bed. Without talking to God. As sinful as I am. 
wrong more than I'm right. And ain't got enough sense to bow on my knees and pray and hear Jesus is. Do I have a witness? These words spake Jesus. Jesus remind us that when you look at folks, you will get depressed. He said, but you got to be careful about looking at yourself. Because when you look at yourself, you'll get distressed. Because when you look and you have more month than money, <laughs> talk to me somebody it will stress you out he said if you look at folks you get depressed look at yourself you get distressed he said that's another way to look if you look up you'll get some rest that's enough for now but I discovered it pays to look up. If you spend all your time looking down, I know what you're going to see. You're going to see two or three pennies. You're going to see a rusty nail and a stick pin and a broke button. When you look down, do I have a witness? When you look around, you're going to see folks grumbling and complaining. And you got to watch folk that's going through because you pick up the habit. I saw on, shouldn't have been looking at it on TikTok. I saw this old man. Bent over like this with a walking kick. Just bending over walking. And right behind him, little old two-year-old baby. Got her a little umbrella. You got to watch hanging around people that's crippled. So stop looking around and start uh, looking up. Can I give you just one more thing and I'm out of here. You see, whenever I pray, I always use the word ateo in the Greek. Ateo is when one, an inferior, is talking to a superior. That means every time I pray, I approach God knowing I'm weak, but he is strong. Every time I pray, I go to him knowing I'm dust, and he is divine. But when Jesus would pray, he would use the Greek word eratao. Eratao it's when one superior is talking uh, to another superior. Have I got a witness? Uh, so when Jesus prayed, he's on the same level uh, with God the Father. That's why I thought I'd tell you, whatever you need, take it. <laughs> I'm out of here. To the Lord in prayer. <laughs> He may not come when you want him, but help to say he's always right on time. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. Help me say it's in the morning. It's in the morning. In the morning. Hallelujah for the Lamb.
Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for this wonderful privilege. Thank you for what you've done, doing, and going to do into and through our lives. Touching this house now, there are those you have sent here to be part of this family, fold, and fellowship. Give them courage and boldness to surrender to you now. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much again. I certainly appreciate you so much for viewing this wonderful worship celebration and service. Thank you for listening to God's word and what God has to say to us and to you. Uh, I want to extend the invitation to you right now, wherever you are, uh, you need to know God is not just a way, he's the way. Uh, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, you can be saved if you're out of church, if you've not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. It is as simple as ABC. A, acknowledge that I am a sinner. B, believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And C, confess him as Lord and Savior. It's that simple. I want to pray for you right where you are now. Gracious God, our Father, I thank you for this, our soul. I pray a special blessing upon him even now that you would bless, that you would keep, that you would save, that you would deliver. We thank you so much for what you're doing and going to do in the life of this person. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Listen, that's a number. You can call 1-800-375-4007 and let us know. Leave a message with us and we'll get right back to you. Thank you so much again for sharing with us. God bless you. Listen, I want to also invite those of you that have been viewing this service that perhaps you want to partner with us in ministry. Uh, you want to share the gospel uh, throughout the nation. You can do that. Uh, we have several ways that you can contribute through your tithes, uh, your offering, or your contribution. Uh, we have Giblify, one of the apps that you can go to right now uh, and find New Salem on the Parkway or there's a barcode before you. You can pull it up on your phone. You have all the information right there before you. Go to New Salem Baptist Church and share a gift there uh, through our internet service. Or if you'd like to send a donation or you'd like to partner with the pastor, uh, just go to the Cash App, Dr. Frank Ray, and share whatever gift you'd like to share. Thank you so much for sharing with us. We appreciate you so much. If you're ever in and around the city of Memphis, please stop by 2237 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee. We have two morning worship services, 7 a.m., 9.30 a.m. Love to have you in the place.